Hi, Stock Centeno, and we're going to look today at a case of a patient who had a unsuccessful Chiari decompression surgery. I've seen quite a few of these, and many times the patients are very surprised by uh, the results of what they're left with, that his anatomy now is very different after the surgery. So we can see here on the left this CT scan that shows that this is where the back of the skull should be, and then this is where the back of the atlas should be, but it's not there, and this is the front of the atlas. Now, I'll show you a 3D image on the right of what was removed. Quite a bit of bone was removed here, and then at the end of the day, we need to understand that this bone is attached to muscles that stabilize the head on the neck. Here are those suboccipital muscles that get removed, usually the rectus capitis posterior minor and posterior major, and those are critical muscles that stabilize uh, the head on the neck. At the same time, he still has craniocervical instability. They've offered him a fusion. We're going to try to tighten down his alar ligaments because he has type 2B craniocervical instability. That's using a PICL procedure. But I wanted to bring this case up because most of the Chiari decompression patients I have spoken to really have no idea that they'll be left in this destabilized position after surgery because critical muscles that stabilize the head on the neck will be removed, and that's just part of the surgery. Now, you may need a Chiari decompression surgery, and if you do, then, then great, but that's why it shouldn't be where you start. Thanks so much for watching, and have a great day.